The first report that we're going to take a look at is the heating and cooling loads report. Before we create the report, it's best to divide the spaces up into zones so that we can analyze the data a little easier. To create a zone, all we have to do is go up on the Analyze tab of the ribbon, and on the Spaces and Zones panel, you'll see the Zone button. Go ahead and click that. Clicking the Zone button drops us into Edit Mode, and we get some contextual tools. Uh, all we have to do now is add some of, add the spaces to our zones. Um, now we're going to divide this up into two different zones. We've got eight spaces here, so I'm going to choose this space through this space, and we'll make that one zone. We'll say finish zone here. Now we want to name this zone, so I'm going to select it and, and edit this zone here. and give it a name and we'll call this zone one and we'll finish that and we'll do the same thing for the other four spaces now that we have our spaces divided up into zones we can concentrate on the settings for our heating and cooling loads report to get to the heating and cooling loads setting we'll just go up on the ribbon and on the analyze tab we'll hit the Heating and Cooling Loads button on the Reports and Schedules panel. This will bring up the Heating and Cooling Loads dialog. Technically, every single space in the building should be occupied at this point with a space that we've created. Clearly, I haven't done that in this scenario, and that's simply because I just want to show you how to use this tool. We're not going to really focus in on the numbers at this point. In addition to that, you should place a space in the plenum spaces as well as shafts that wouldn't normally get a room or a space. Placing spaces in these unoccupied areas will generate a report that is a lot more accurate than it would if they were not placed in those areas. On the left hand side here of the heating and cooling loads report, we have the preview pane. And this is essentially our building and it's highlighting or basically showing us all of the spaces that we've placed in our model. We don't actually see the zones that we've developed here, but each individual space that has been uh, placed in the model at this point. On the right hand side, there are, are a, there is a general tab and a details tab. On the general tab, this is what it kind of sounds like. It's just general settings for the report that we're going to create. Now there are a number of settings that you'll absolutely have to address before you can actually or before you should actually run the heating and cooling loads report um, and we'll talk about a, a number of those here. Uh, for example the building type we should set it to the type of building that we're actually developing. Uh, and in this case it's an office building but if you hit the drop down over here you'll see that there are a number of different building types that you can choose from you'll need to set it to one of those building types to be able to run this um, this report we need to locate the building properly because Revit is going to calculate um, the heating and co cooling loads report based on partly the outside temperature of where we've located this particular building. The ground plane is kind of obvious. Um, we're essentially saying use level one as the ground plane. Project phase, we need to make sure that we're running the report for the phase of the build that the building is in. Otherwise, it won't actually calculate anything. So the sliver space tolerance in this case is set to one foot. Now a sliver space is the area that will be ignored when the heating and cooling load is run. So for example, imagine a chase wall with a, a space between the walls. That is actually a sliver space. So we're going to leave it at one foot. The building envelope is in this case going to be determined by the the use function parameter in the walls that are defined in the architectural model. There's a parameter in there that defines the use of the wall or whether it's interior or exterior. 
and the report will make its calculations based on that setting. So we're going to leave it as use function parameter. Now the building service basically tells us, you know, what type of heating and cooling uh, system are we using in uh, in this particular building. Uh, the schematic types we're going to leave it at building, but and and that's sort of the default setting. Um, but you could, if you wanted to, come in here and click the little uh, hidden button here on the right hand side and specifically define what the roof is or the exterior walls or the doors so on and so forth. The building infiltration class it's basically estimating how much of the outdoor uh, temperature is going to infiltrate uh, your building. So it's set to none right now that means it's just going to be excluded from the calculation and that's what we want. The report type basically you can choose from simple um, to standard to detailed and the farther down you go standard or detailed um, the more comprehensive and more uh, stuff you're going to get in your report and we're just going to leave the use load credits alone um, that essentially has to do with um, heat or cool air moving from one zone to another through a partition and that can account as a either a negative or a positive load credit. So we're going to leave it. That's a little complicated. We're going to leave it um, unchecked at this point. Um, now let's check, take a look at the details uh, tab here, which is a little bit simpler. Um, now what you can do with the details tab is you can kind of highlight things here. So let's say, for example, we've got load one. Uh, if we expand that a little bit, we can select uh, the individual pieces over here on the right hand side. We can highlight that piece or we can isolate that piece um, and, and inspect it a little bit more. So we can zoom in on this guy if we isolate it a little bit. We can kind of drill down into the, uh, the space type a little bit and all the components that kind of make up that space type. Now if I go back up here to the top and I select the analytical surface surfaces button here and, and activate that you'll see that it it kind of activates uh, a few more surfaces here and I've got 202 instruction highlighted here and if we just sort of isolate that let's expand that you can look at the roof uh, and I'll technically um, you know there are different pieces to this roof and as we go through now these are all the uh, lighting fixtures so these are air gaps within the ceiling actually not necessarily a roof you can take a look at the exterior walls so if I select these you'll see that they highlight in the model for me here and uh, let's go back to the spaces tab um, down here at the bottom so uh, if we uh, highlight one in particular we can really kind of um, specifically define what this space is let's say for example that it's um, a, a like it says here a classroom lecture training room if it's not that's not what it is we can open the settings up here and kind of uh, set it to what um, it is more specifically and each one of these has uh, a different setting to it so let's say for example this was a dining area when I select dining area you'll notice that the numbers on the right hand side change and this is all sort of in the background and it's been defined for us so that we don't have to go in here and, and update that information now, once you're done with all of the settings, both in the General tab and the Details tab, we're just going to go ahead and click the Calculate button. And that, very quickly, calculates our Heating and Cooling Loads report. And you can go through here and it will show you the zone summary for Zone 1. It shows you the square footage of that particular zone and it's taking into account all of the spaces that are associated with uh, zone one. The same holds true for zone two. Um, all of the information is listed out and broken down into spaces as well. All right, that is information on the heating and cooling loads report, but there are a number of other reports uh, up here on the reports and schedules panel that we want to take a look at. For example, the duct pressure loss report and the pipe pressure loss report are reports that will give us feedback about the uh, duct systems or piping systems that we've developed that will help us to better design uh, the systems that we have for the particular project that we're working on. And that's what we're going to take a look at in the next video.